We have 450 students. We are a very, very diverse school, and it's one of the things we're the most proud of. We really celebrate the diversity. But of course, it brings a little bit of challenge because we have a lot of English language learners. We have about 70% of the students are learning English. And they're in a continuum. Some of them know quite a bit, and some of them know absolutely none at all. You know, every year we get some students that have just arrived. So that's one of the things that we really work on is, is how to teach them English in addition to teaching them all the subjects they need to learn so that they don't fall behind at grade level. You know, a lot of my students come from families that, that are um, low economically. We have at least 90% of our students on free and reduced lunch. And, and you know that students of poverty have some additional challenges, so we're going to beat all that. It kind of started as a kernel in a little staff development that I was giving for the staff, and I was talking about unpacking the problem using that sort of language. Karen said something like, well, why can't we tell that to the kids? Why can't we call it that with the kids? And then created this suitcase image that, that we use to describe unpacking the problem. We have found that a lot of kids are not successful with word problems, and there's so many of them that they're faced with. And so that's really the ultimate goal, is that they'll be more successful with those kinds of problems. Okay. The thing that it's doing is creating sort of an interest in the whole word problem idea. We have them all, all over the hallway, which I think you saw. We put it in our little weekly newspaper. And students, I think, are, are enjoying that part of it. There's the three main steps, looking for the facts, looking for the clues, kind of like, you know, imagining your little magnifying glass and going through it, then making a game plan. How are you going to solve it? And then a new kind of a more recent development, at least for us, is going back and reflecting on whether or not their answer is probable, logical, and being able to discuss how they got their answer with their peers. No, why don't you go like this? Because I think that it makes the problem more interesting and more like challenging for a student to do. It's fun and I like it because you get to um, play with the problem and make a game out of it mostly. And then once you get an answer, you can share with someone and try to figure out what, which one is the um, real answer. Typically, word problems have some tricks. Sometimes they'll give you some additional information, whereas if you've got a problem of 89 divided by 13, it, it's there. But if it would be something like, so-and-so teacher has 89 pieces of paper and wants to divide it amongst 13 students. The paper costs $5.89. How many pieces does every student get? You know, there's a bunch of stuff in there. Every single day, I'm so impressed and so amazed and astounded at what hardworking, devoted students we have. These are kids who go the extra mile. If we're not clear and exact, can we do mathematics? Compared to schools with like demographics, we are very, very high. The state ranks us two ways. On a, on a ranking from one to 10, one being the lowest, 10 being the highest. So if you rank, rank us based on our number, I think we're a six, just on all the schools in California. But if you rank us based on schools with like demographics, we're a 10. 
to that's a sweet number.